computer audio participant. Okay, my friends, um, let's turn to page 25. No, wrong page. 27. 27, friends, okay? Twenty-seven. Go ahead and write the date at the top of the page. when Craig and I put the desk together, normally I would very much look at who got put at which group table. Yesterday, it was literally uh, Miss Ward in here talking to me while Craig and I were putting desks together. I did not even pay attention to who got put next to whom. I was just thrilled to be the first teacher getting to put my desk together in groups. Miss Sparks gave me permission yesterday and I was so grateful to be able to put my desk together because you guys saw what my room looked like yesterday. Nope. So, um, yeah. Your desks, I was just concerned that you had room to be able to move around the classroom because yesterday we didn't have room, did we? Now we do, right? Yeah. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is identify the question we're investigating. Uh, which is what's written on the board. You see that one that has a big arrow next to it? Where does all the weather rock go? Yeah. That's going to be the question you write at the top of your page 27. Okay. Where does all the weather rock go? Why is that yes, Joanna. Yes. See, we have hand signals up there. This means pencil. It doesn't just mean everybody's giving me a few sign. Careful, this is not the cement. As a needle, it's very sharp. Just to make it look different. Okay. This worked just fine. It worked just fine. They are too picky, and that disturbs me from teaching. Okay, Megan, so. The question you're going to write on page 27 at the top where it says identify the question you're investigating is where does all the weathered rock go? Okay. Where does all the weathered rock go? Now, the nice thing about group tables, this means you can actually talk with the people at your group tables to discuss ideas. Um, we are going to continue with teacher-led labs like this because it goes a lot faster when we actually finish our labs on time, okay? Okay. So go into the launch, the prompts, because you guys see how I set up every single lab. Launch, learn, land, right? That's how it's set up in my book. Okay, you see the launch? Okay, and learn. And land. That's how it's set up every single lab. Launch, learn, land. Every day. Okay. So what do you think could move 
weathered rock. Um, air. air could. What else do you think could move weathered rock? Land. Jordan. Water. Water could definitely move weathered rock. Does anybody online have any ideas about what could move weathered rock? You're going to have to unmute yourself or use a chat feature to tell me what you think could move weathered rock. Water. Water could move weathered rock. What else could move weathered rock? Uh, Logan. Plants. Yes, plants could. What else could? I'm looking at a big old poster that might help you. I'm guessing. Allie, I'm guessing. what else could move weathered rock? Ice. Um, glaciers could certainly rub and move weathered rock. Absolutely. What else could? Kayla. Yeah. Wind could. What else could? Let me give you a hint. Guys, look. Hello. What causes my scissors to drop? Gravity. Gravity. Right? We've seen that in a picture before, haven't we? Okay. Someone proposed in my book here that people could physically pick up rocks, right? Could animals? Yeah. They could, but this wouldn't really be part of the natural everyday Grand Canyon. We're moving a lot of weathered rock from peoples and an peoples from people and animals, right? That wouldn't be how most of the Grand Canyon formed, right? It's possible, but that's not how the Grand Canyon formed. It's not from people slowly moving rocks. Everybody understands that, right? Okay. Um, someone in my third block not yesterday, but the day before, noted that in those pictures of the rocks with the holes in it, that it looked like sand had blown those little holes in the rocks. With that in mind, do you think sand could maybe, even though it's tiny, do you think sand could even move little pieces of stuff? Yeah. Because remember we mentioned sand dunes yesterday, didn't we? So what's pushing sand dunes around? What, air? Wind, right? So wind could push sand and sand could knock things over or just wind could knock things over, right? Okay. Mud could. What could? Mud. Absolutely mud could. Everybody's heard of landslides, right? Okay because we're going to explore landslides um, probably in about a month, because you know how we switch from science to social studies, science to social studies. So in about a month, we're going to be exploring landslides in here. Thus this. Yeehaw. Can you hear my excitement? Yeah, not really. Okay. Um, has anybody ever noticed when you water a garden or something that the water pushes mud away sometimes it can push a lot of mud away so could water move a lot of rock pieces away yes okay so did you recall when we looked at all the pictures of the canyon what was in every picture of the canyon rock Rocks, yes, but what else is in every picture? Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Not in every single picture. Yeah. Water. Water. In the form of what? In the form of a river. In the form of a river. So what part do you think that river plays in the canyon? Why don't everybody consider that river? That river is integral to the canyon. What do you think that canyon has done to that river? All right, what do you yeah, sit back? What do you, think, what do you think the river has done to the canyon? Open. Jordan. Um, I think it made like a bunch of cracks and stuff. It did. And Who is ever with a water hose? watched water kind of carve out a little mud channel 
right? And the longer you hold it there, the deeper that little mud channel gets. Does that look like a mini version of a canyon? Yes. So do you think if that water stayed there for a long, 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 long time, it create maybe um, a, big a big canyon? Yeah. So do you think that river might have, you know, formed the canyon? Yeah. And maybe that's why you saw a river in every single picture Whoa. of the canyon? The river is what cut through the rock. The river is pretty darn important, okay? That's why we're exploring water with the dirt. Ronnie, you think it will take to make Well, do you remember the demonstration about um, the beginning of Earth versus when um, layer F was laid down? Layer E was laid down, layer C was laid down, and when humans came along. Hey. We're pretty new, but the Grand Canyon is pretty old, right? So layer F was laid down here, layer E here, so this is when the river came along. Okay, so the river's been around for a while, right? Okay. So the materials we used in this, can anybody tell me some of the materials we used yesterday? Maya, tell me one of the things. Yay. Grass and leaves. What's something else we use, Allie? Soil. Soil. What's something else we use, Kayla? The, the grass and leaves, definitely. Which one's one? Is this one? No. That one. no. Is one the one that's closest oh, to Innocente? Yeah. Okay. Every one of them I purposely made different. That way we can notice differences when we're um, doing our activities. Mr. Williams came in for an observation yesterday, and unfortunately he came right after the experiment. He likes to come in and watch experiments in here. I told you guys before I do more experiments in here than any other class in school. Well, there's other science rooms, but nobody does as many as I do. I like science a lot. I have an undergrad science. science. I do too. I have a science degree. I have a biology degree in college. And then I have most of an nursing degree. All right, so we have potting soil. Do you remember me saying peat moss? It's to help absorb the water. And then I added perlite, which is that white stuff. And then I added some pebbles, all these things to increase airflow and to decrease the chances of mold. And then I actually remember to take Mucinex, so I'm not all sneezy and nasty today because all this stuff that we're messing with today. Okay, so today, tomorrow, next week, like every day, we're going to be working with these things. Okay, working with dirt. Yay. Can you hear my excitement? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So our first thing we're supposed to do is wind. Experiment with wind, which would normally be a straw and blowing. Um, is that something we can do? No. Uh, do something, Carl. Because what? You have to take off your mask. You'd have to take off your mask and we're still in COVID precautions, right? I know. No, look. So I bought this. And I charged it already. It's a mini fan. I had I had a mini fan, but it didn't work. So I bought another. This has three different speeds. One of them would blow stuff. <laughs> blow all over. Wow, they're emailing us a whole lot this morning. I won't say what. Uh, the highest so your instructions in your book, because remember your book has more instructions on how to do the experiment than mine does. It wants you to do what in terms of wind? What does it say for wind? Yes, Jordan. Can you get a paper towel or two and dry it and nobody falls? 
specifically the klutzy one here that's already assembled across the student? Paper towel. Okay. Paper towel holder. See the black thing on the wall? There you go. Already like stumbled all over Addison's one. Okay, so it says it right here to position the screen bed table. So the drain hole, I gotta move this guy. So let me do share screen, live image, share, make this large. The drain hole, which is right here, is over the bucket, which it is. Okay. It's about to get messy, and I'm probably about to blow dirt all over my keyboard. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Um, it's going to catch water in a little while. Your screen is stuck. What's that? Your screen is stuck. Like it's frozen. Yeah. Great. Okay, let me try this again. Your screen. Mate. Okay, is it working now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, so your step two says to place it so the drain hole hangs over the edge of the table with a bucket under it. Isn't that what we have right here? Yes. I know for this one table here, it's hard to see, but there is a bucket down here, a five gallon bucket. Um, it says remove the rubber stopper. Why do you think it wants me to remove the rubber stopper? So the wind, if it's going to blow the dirt out, it will be able to do so unimpeded. And when I start pushing through the ice or the water, or when I call a student over to do so, it can go through unimpeded. Oh, I thought the one here to look at it and see the bucket. I got three of them. Good morning, Mr. Woods. All right, turn to your page 28, investigation one. There be no goggles because the school did not buy goggles for all my students. The goggles that we do have are all scratched up and you couldn't see through them. Really? It would be pretty much putting. Um, a handkerchief across your eyes and telling you to do the experiment blind. There, there's no sense in that, so you don't wear the goggles. Oh, that's the only Yeah, I mean, if you have on glasses, you're good to go, like me. You don't wear that. Oh, what is that? I said, you I can't hear her. Somebody else is talking out of turn. Apparently, you don't mind negative dojos. What is it? Do you need them to see? Why do you have them? I can't hear you. So the doctor gave them to you for funsies? Why do you have them? Yeah. Are they for seeing up close or are they for seeing distance? So it would probably help you to see what's on the screen, not so much for writing, correct? Okay, so let's put them on for when I have the screen going, okay? When you go to write, take them off there. Okay. See, I'm blind as a bat without mine. Mine are about the Enjoy my seizure medicine, but it keeps me from the seizure. All right. So, you see my goggles. They're my glasses that allow me to see all you little people. Otherwise, you're a cute little blur. All right. We're not going to do this in a group. One short, hard breath means. On high. Okay. This would be high and I would blow dirt all over the place. Innocent A, if I move this, would be eating dirt in a moment. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I don't think he wants to eat dirt for breakfast. Okay. So this hard, short breath would be medium. A light, continuous breath is going to be the first one. Okay, my first setting, so it's low setting. A strong continuous breath is this medium setting and me just leaving it there. It's gonna blow dirt, it just will. It's gonna blow leaves. What's the medium? Yes. What's next? No, hard. 
No, I'm not going to go into the following part. Okay. So I can only do this once because I'm going to have to repack it afterwards, right? Page 28, right? Page 28. Okay. You're going to record what you see happen. Our first one is a hard, short breath. So I'm going to put this on there and you record what you see happens in the box. Clear? Is this on medium? I'm going to put it on there for a few seconds and I'm going to take it away. Got it? Got it. And you write in that first column where it says hard, short breath. Okay, so my friends that are online, the first thing you're going to write in goes right here. Okay, got it? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to blow is with medium setting, so it's going to represent hard, and I'm only going to do it for a few seconds, short breath, and you're going to write what you see, what happens in the bucket. Does the dirt blow, do the leaves blow, what happens, okay? Got it? Okay. Ready? Actually, that didn't really blow very hard. I'm going to go ahead and turn it up to high. Okay, there's a few pieces moving. Okay, a few pieces moved. You see right here? Yeah. No, no. Large, short breath. I'll turn it up to high. Page, is that? That was page 28. Thank you. Uh huh. Little pieces of uh, dirt blue. Leaves and dirt blue. A few pieces of dirt blue and some leaves blue. And I'm just kind of repacking this again. P I E C E S. Mm -hmm. I need to bring my Alexa from home. What do you think the ice represents? Not what? Not glitter. What does it represent? It doesn't represent rock. What does the ice represent? You'll see in a minute. Okay, did everybody write something down for hard, short breath? Okay, everybody's finished this one. Anybody still writing? Okay. Me, I am. Yes. Everybody online has finished writing for the first column, hard, short breath? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Still my little sugar answer on the box. Oh, got one on me. No, they don't. Sugar ants. They just mess with you. Yep. All right. Okay, so now we're going to do the light continuous breath. A 
Okay, so a couple little pieces of uh, the light dirt have moved and a couple leaves have moved. Perlite, but just say the smaller grains of dirt have moved. Okay. That's that middle column. C O U P L E. That's for the middle one. Okay. All right, is everybody online finished with that middle column? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Jackson, you finished? Okay, so here comes the last one, the strong continuous breath. You guys can't see it, but there's pieces of dirt now outside the box. There's pieces of dirt all around here. Little pieces have gone flying. <laughs> okay, so the strong continuous wind we're seeing more things fly, right? And little pieces are going flying like straight up in the air. I'm catching some on my lap. That more pieces of soil are moving. I mean, literally it's flying straight up in the air over here. There's pieces of dirt all around the box. Your teacher's actually allergic to ants. So yeah, no. I've got weird allergies. I'm also allergic to Botox. I switched three years of migraine shots, did you? Okay, so you see this, right? Y'all see what this is doing? Yep. Yeah. Going airborne, literally. Yeah. Okay, please stop kicking the desk. And some of it dropped down in the bucket down here too. Ouch. Um, Sensei, do you mind getting your hands ready? Oh, I'm just...
Oh, no. Well, you're pausing for a moment, so I guess you do. Allie, come over here. Oh, there's really nothing to do. It's an old one. Okay, so see that part that says what natural process in the Grand Canyon could your breath represent? Right now, what, that, what the wind, what the air could have represented? Don't say it out loud. Just right now, what it represents. Okay. Yeah. What does that represent? You didn't write anything for that last column, right? What does that represent? What does the fan represent? You can get it to me. Okay. I mean, did the fan represent uh, a thunderstorm? No. Yeah. What it represent? Right now, what it represents. And then write down on the top of your next page. What is that? Seven. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Yeah. Um. Write down the the difference in the way it moves. So, see how it moves more each time. Twenty-nine. Write that down. Off of it. Write down. How it moves more the longer the wind, the longer the air blew on it. Okay. Okay, speak up. I don't know what my fan represented. You don't know what my fan represented? No. your answer. You just answered it. Part two, I answered her two questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do this tomorrow, but I'll put the one in. All right, so I've already replaced the soil pebble brock grass. And what does it say in the third sentence? What does the ice cube represent? A glacier. So Allie's about to put a glacier on top of the hill. Yes, she's about to put a mini glacier on top of the hill. Just read it if you were listening. How is she putting a glacier on top of the hill? With her bare hands. With her bare hands. Okay, she's so strong, she's putting a glacier up there. Okay. All right. Yeah, AKA I Okay. Okay, you're gonna do one at a time, you're gonna do three different ones. Okay, right, so put it up there. Mm -hmm. Not like that. Put it up there and you press down on it and then watch it go down. All right, so my friends on line, Allie's about to press this down. Watch what it does to the hill and to the ice cube. Okay. Go ahead and press that. No, 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 no. It's already in there. Allie, press down the ice cube down the hill. Where everybody can see it going down. Okay. Yep. Don't press down so much that it totally destroys the hill, but just like lightly press it down. Okay. Yep, they are. Okay, so what did it do to the hill, guys? It, it didn't kill the hill. <laughs> okay, so look at the ice cube. Um, it moves some of the soil and what's stuck to the ice cube? Yeah. Leaves and dirt, right? So that's exactly what happens with the glacier. The glacier picks up some of the soil, some of the rocks and the stuff that it moves across. It takes it with it. Okay, grab another. Wind it three times. Okay. <laughs> 
That's fine. So that's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> and that's exactly what it does. It tears into the land. That's how the Great Lakes were formed. It tears into the land. It gouges out valleys, just like in our coloring sheet yesterday. It gouges out valleys. Look, it made an indentation in the land. And then look, it moves some of the dirt down. Okay, and then look at the ice cubes. Oh, that's, a that's an ice cube. Oh. Yeah, it is covered in dirt. You want to go wash your hands now? Start washing on your jacket. Okay. Y'all see this? Yes. Yeah. It looks messy, doesn't it? Yeah. So, what does a glacier do to the hill? It takes it over. No, it doesn't take it over. What does it do? It's not that it destroys it. What does it do? It gouges out. It moves the dirt and rocks and leaves. It moves some of the dirt and rocks and leaves and it creates a little bit of a valley, doesn't it? Did everybody see that little bit of a valley online? Yes. For my virtual friends, do you see the little valley that the glacier left behind? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so record your observations i'm not going to move anything yet but draw what you see happen okay i'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little bit better you're going to draw page 29 on page 29 i'm trying to show it it's kind of not showing very well the 3d dimension of it it's a little bit taller right here and it gouged like a valley here and a little bit of a valley here. And then it knocks down the grass and leaves to the bottom. See, look, here's the grass and leaves that knocked down. And then the ice was down here. I already moved the ice into the bucket, but the ice was down here and the ice had dirt stuck to it, okay? You need to draw that at the bottom of your page 29. All right? Here, I'll help you out in Put an ice cube in there for you. Yes, Jordan. I'm going to call people over one at a time for different parts, okay? So draw a hill. Draw a hill and draw a little valley. Or draw two little valleys. Draw your ice cube. Your ice cube. The glacier. Okay. Your ice cube having dirt on it. And then label it. Label what happened. Because remember, I'm not trying to guess what's going on in your picture, okay? Hill, it's a hill, H-I-L-L. -L. I have to spell some things sometimes because my accent is so strong. I know that. Um, sometimes you can get, because we're breathing through it, sometimes you can grow like micro mold in your mask. I was reading about this. So it's recommended you switch out your mold, your mask every day or two. I've been having to switch mine every day. And finally, I've just started taking mucinex because my mold allergy is getting so bad. Yeah, That's why doing these is not helping my allergies at all. Yeah, I have nose problems that, um, that have to like, um, mold out this fall at nighttime. Yeah, I'm supposed to take steroids in the fall and I don't. All right, I'm going to go ahead and 
repack my heel here, okay? Because now it's about to get messy. Oh, Lord. <sighs> sure. Remember, I need it labeled so I know what's going on in your picture. because you've labeled your drawing, okay? And this goes back in the freezer for second and third block. All right. Okay, so the question at the top of page 30, what do you notice about the way the materials move when you push the ice cube down the stream table? Write down about what stuck to the ice cube and what moved, okay? What stuck to the ice cube and what moved? Because with the wind, top of page 30, with the wind, the leaves and grass moved, right? With the glacier, it wasn't so much the leaves and grass moving, was it? It was something else that moved more, right? Okay, so write that, right? I used to leave. This is how I used to leave the. Okay. Yes, it does. 
And my second and third block is are the two classes where I have very few cells in third block. First block, first block, I'll see if I can figure out your right. Second and third. Okay, Jordan, you finished recording yours? Have you finished recording your results on the ice cube? Okay, hurry up because you're doing the next part. Okay, come over here, please. So you're going to put your fingers here like that. And then I'm going to pour water in and you're going to hold this over this. When I tell you you're going to move your hands out. Okay. So what we're moving to now, guys, is page 30, where it says part two. This is the, the cup with several small holes. Okay. And Jordan's going to help us with the cup with several small holes. Just an FYI, the cup with several small holes, they are just that. They're small holes. And the way I've done the holes, they're not going to come flowing out fast. I have a cup with one small hole where the hole is larger, it's more like a river. Okay. Where did it say one? Okay. So can you see the hole in this one? Mm -hmm. It's big. The holes in this, there's three holes, but they're small. Okay. You'll see a difference in the way the water flows out on the hill. Okay. All right. So we're going to hold this up. Put your hand under it. Right over this. Is water going to fall in the hand? Yeah, it will. Can I fold it? I'm going to hold it up right here. Right here. All right, my online friends, watch what she's doing. No, not over your fingers, but over your palm of your hand. There you go. Okay, now move your hand. Okay. Is it really moving very much of the water of the soil? No. Okay, can you hold it like this and I'll pour it through? Hold it like that. Okay, now is it moving very much? It's moving some, kind of slowly. Yes. It does. So what would this represent, guys? It would represent a rainfall. Good thing we have that. Okay, watch your doing so you don't actually just do it on my So that's my computer right there. Whoa. You just use that whole thing? Yep. Okay. 
Okay, so everybody can agree this represents a rainfall, right? <laughs> yep, that's the whole joke. All right, that's it. All right, I need to talk and to stop, and I need you to record your observations. Okay, draw a picture. Just FYI, it's the draining. So there's standing water in here because the drain hole got filled. It moved some of the dirt all through here. Okay. Class, class. I need the cranius talking to stop. Okay. There's like a hole right here where the rain was hitting. Kind of like you guys at home, if you have a downspout at your house, it ends up with a hole where the rain hits real hard, doesn't it? Yeah. That's what this is right here. There's like a drain, like a hole right here where a lot of the water was hitting. And it caused a lot of dirt to move through the box. Okay. And down in the bucket, there's a lot of dirt down there too. So draw what you just saw, okay? And that would represent a rainfall. Yep. Are you understanding why I'd rather have one experiment going per classroom than five per classroom? Yes. Because this is messy. How what? Don't know. Uh, that was black marker. Not purple. I need the talking to stop though. Yes.
We give everybody enough time to do their drawing and label it. Obviously, with today's lesson being so many pages, you're going to have quite a few points from it too, right? Yeah. Next one, the hole is bigger, so I'm going to do this for myself. Hi, guys. It will be messier. All right. So, did you write at the bottom of page 30 what the natural process that would represent? The three holes. The three holes represent right at the bottom. What would your three holes? from the small hole. So at first, it just moved a little bit of dirt, right? Mm -hmm. And then what did it do? It moved oh. a lot. It moved a lot of dirt. After a few seconds, it started moving a lot of dirt, right? Okay, so write that down. At first, it only moved a little bit of dirt, and then it moved a lot of dirt. It actually plugged up the hole. Page 31. Page 31, yes. At first, for my virtual friends, at, on page 31, the top, at first, the water moved a little bit of the dirt. Then after a few seconds, it moved a lot of dirt and actually plugged up the drain hole with dirt. All right, are my online friends able to keep up with us? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Getting water splashed on my notebook over here. Hopefully, I'm not getting water on my computer. Some dirt on it. All right, one more minute, friends, to finish up the top of page 31, and then we're going to go on with the next part of the experiment, okay? Tomorrow we do some. Tomorrow is actually messier, but it's going to be the same way where I call one person over at a time. Um, What's that, this? No, that. The white ball. 
that? Yeah. It's a moon, light up moon. Cool. I'm actually going to use that to help teach weathering and erosion soon enough. The moon has weathering and erosion all over it. What's that? And they're coming up with a lot of new images of the sun lately, past two weeks. Six, six over there. Yep. All right, so we're going to go on to the one that the cup with one hole. It happens to be a big hole. Okay, y'all see how big this one is? So obviously, this hole is different than those other three holes that were small. Okay. This is going to have two liters poured through it also. Woo. Well, that was lovely. I just poured some water on my table. Yeah, right. So watch what happens to this. This one looks completely different how it's moving, doesn't it? It's not it's not just that it's mud. All right. I need my students by tables come over here and see what it did. By tables. Come over here, table closest to me. Joanna and Innocente, hurry. And it's gone, Joanna. The whole hill is gone, isn't it? All right, go sit. Table with uh, Michaela and, yeah, Jordan, hurry. The whole hill is gone. The whole, the, it's landslide. Yeah, go, go. No, it doesn't. All right, Logan, come on. Logan and Maya, hurry, 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 hurry. Landslide. All right, um, Aaliyah and Ricardo, hurry. Well, I mean, it's been dirt, but it's landslide. The hill went away. We have a landslide. All right, Allie, Allie, come on. Okay, it collapsed. Landslide. All right, this table right beside me. Come on. Bryson, get up. Uh, landslide. It completely collapsed right here. Okay, so for my friends online, you can't see this as well, but the whole hill went away. There's a big landslide. This is where the hill was. Now you can see I put my hand completely down. This is all water. The hill is gone. This is all just floating water, okay? Reminiscent of what Gulf Shores looks like right now, okay? The hill is gone. So for your part three at the bottom of page 31, you're going to draw um, a floating tub, <laughs> pretty much, with mud on top and explain that you had a landslide. Show that the hill went away. You had a big landslide. You had a big landslide. The hill went away. I get to try to rebuild this. Oh, yeah. Okay, guys, do your drawing and let me do this, okay? You have a job and I have a messier job. Do your work quietly.
I know y'all don't know this about Miss Daniels, but she doesn't like messes. Can you imagine her doing this? Who? Miss Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, uh, no. No. <laughs> So turn your page to 32. After you finish your drawing and you explain it with words, what natural process could the water from the cup with one hole represent? That wouldn't be regular rainfall, would it, guys? No. What would that be? They wouldn't have a hurricane in the Grand Canyon. What would that be? A flood. How did the materials move, guys? What did I describe it as? Uh, no, what did I describe it as as it was happening? It was like a river. It, it looked like a river, but what did I describe it as? How did the materials move? It was a landslide. A landslide. It looked like a landslide. It just went away, didn't it? That's page 32. And how was that different from how they moved in part two? How was that different from how they moved when we had the cup with three holes? Um, it, it depends, it depends, it well, I mean, it moved in part two, but it didn't look like a landslide, did it? No. Okay, so write that down. So you're answering those questions on page 32, okay? You're on page 32. Page 32. Wait just a little bit because we still have another page to go. Oh my. Yes, and it's full of ants now. Oh yeah, lots of ants. Not fire ants, but I mean, they've got eggs and everything in here. Oh. Oh, just quietly do your work, please. Finish up page 32 so we can go on to the next page.
Part two is the part where we had a cup with uh, one, uh, three holes. So you're comparing the cup with one hole and how the water poured down the box to the cup with three holes and how the water moved. Okay, so now we're going to learn about this term. Oh, no, we haven't got there yet. Gravity. So we're going to look at these pictures first before we get to the term. So I'm still on page 32. Miss Van Diver? Yes. I'm still on page 32. Okay. I'm going to go fill up the water bottle real quick. I remember you're supposed to go. If you're talking to me, I can't hear you right now from the water bottle. Look, it's set in water. That's great.
All right, so for this last part, gravity, we're going to look at photographs and we're going to try to infer. We're going to try to think about how gravity could cause landslides or falling rocks, which would move weathered material. And weathered material means what again? What is weathered material? Jordan. Jordan. What is weathered material? What is that? What is weathered rock? Water. Does what? What does it do? It, it, it breaks up rock, right? Okay. So we're going to look at these pictures and we're going to try to guess how or try to, to look at the picture and figure out how gravity broke up, caused cracks and broke the rocks. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So in your notebook, it says, page 33, figure one, write down what you see in the picture about what you see in terms of breaking of the rocks, okay? As it relates to gravity. So here's your figure one. Wrong way. You're going to write down the details of what you see in terms of broken rock. How do you think gravity calls that? Gravity? Yes. How do you think gravity, I'm trying to figure out how to move it. I'm, I'm trying to move it how it needs to be. My elbow's in a different place. There it goes. Okay. I think we're wrong. Okay, so these are little pieces of rock right down here, guys. These are little pieces of rock down here. Isn't weathered meaning broken? Yes. Okay, so those are little pieces of broken rock there. And don't we see cracks all over the place? Yes. Doesn't that mean weathering? Yes. Okay, so tell me how you think gravity has affected that. Well, do your best. I'm trying to center it off, guys. What? That's your figure one, page 33. Uh, you can. There's a space between the smart board and this first table. Again, that's little pieces right there that I just pointed out. We're not looking at plants, we're talking about gravity. Gravity, you know, things dropping, breaking.
Do you notice how those little pieces of rock right there look like they might have fallen off the wall right above it? Yeah. Okay. Would gravity have called that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you haven't recorded anything yet, that would be a good thing to record. No. Please don't say that because other people might take you seriously and like that. No, you just said it and other people might take you seriously. Okay. 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 Make water. So, but in this picture, we're not talking about water, we're just talking about gravity. The cracks could have possibly, like we see the little pieces of rock right there, right? But could rocks have also fallen down at other times and been taken over by the granary that we see? Gravity could have, over the years, have been. Breaking off pieces, right? And they're only that hard. Could have been happening, happening for millions of years. What's that hard? Yeah. How old is the Grand Canyon anyway? Millions. Remember we were talking about layer F, what? layer E. What is older than? Oh. Not yet. About to show you figure two. Is everybody online ready for me to turn to figure two? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Jackson, go. Jackson, tuned out. Oh, I see it now. Jackson, are you ready for me to go to figure two? Guess so. All right. Going to figure two. This one might be easier for you to see the effects of gravity. I see a lot of oh, rock. Oh, why you Okay. All right, so that's your figure two. Tell me how gravity has affected the rocks in figure two. Okay, tell me how gravity has affected the rocks there. It's like plants and gravity both have affected those rocks. Right. All right, not talking over there. There's lots of small rocks. There's even big rocks are broken off too. More plants. All the kinds of plants. So write about how gravity has affected those rocks.
for enrichment today guys uh, okay. here is figure three now this one i'm going to point out there are little pieces of rock right here there are more little pieces of rock here in here you can tell there's been a lot of breaking right okay but there's little pieces right all over here okay All right, let's get this one done because I got to take you to enrichment in one minute. This set. Uh, it's called a butte because it's kind of flat on top. B U T T E. B U T T E. B U T T E. By the way, my two hard days. One. So, just FYI for my virtual friends, you have on page. I drop it Like, yep. You have one more page that we have to go and that is the well two more pages 34 35 after i drop my kids off at enrichment i will come back and teach that to you guys okay okay so i'll okay. be gone about five minutes and i'll come back i've got to take you to enrichment joanna all right my face-to-face -face friends let's line up remember to sanitize your hands yes you need your art bags I can't hear a student because they're background talking, right? You have a You need to also grab a window. I need to be talking. Stop. Yeah. 
Class, class. Stop your talking. I'll fix that while you're gone. Those desks fight back. Really bruised. All right, guys, let's line up. I need to get to six there. We're running two minutes late. Class, class. Yes, yes. Can you tell the teacher left? <laughs> I don't know.
Thank you. 
Okay, guys, I am so sorry I've been gone so long. We had a couple meetings. Thank you guys for being patient and waiting for me. Are y'all still here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So much. Yes, ma'am. Okay. What similarities do you notice about all three investigations? So, did the fan, i.e., I'm going to pull down my mask because nobody's in the room, did the fan move the materials, the thing that is, is substituting for our rock? Did the fan move the materials? Partially. Okay. Did um, the water, both with three holes in the cup and the one hole cup, did it move materials? Yeah. Okay. Did the ice cube move materials? Yeah. Okay. So similarities, I'm trying to pencil. And similarities, y'all had to wait, so you're all going to get the answers just straight up written for you, okay? So all. <laughs> um forces that being wind water ice and while we didn't do an experiment with gravity we saw the effects of it in the photos and gravity all moved the materials okay um the cup with one hole which represented a flood moved materials the fastest okay all right let me see if i can get this to show up like it needs to wrong way nope right way there we go wrong way I move everything backwards with this Elmo. All right, move this a little bit and zoom out just a little bit. Okay, so all forces, wind, water, ice, and gravity, all moved the materials. The cup with one hole, which represented a flood, moved materials the fastest. So all of our investigations represent erosion, which is a process that moves weathered rock. Weathering is just breaking down rock. Erosion, or soil, erosion is a process that breaks down rock and moves it away. And where weathering has four factors that break it down, that's wind, ice, water, and plants, Erosion's four factors are a little bit different. Wind, water, ice, or gravity. So erosion isn't caused by plants. Instead of plants, your fourth factor is gravity, okay? So what happens to the sediment? Sediment's a name for all the broken up pieces of rock. What happens to the sediment when we take away the cause of erosion? So what happened to all the soil in those boxes after the erosion was caused? Where did the sediment go? Can someone unmute and tell me that? Don't everybody talk at once. 
Where did the sediment go? Where did the soil go in my boxes or my box when the water was poured in or when the wind was applied? What happened to the sediment? It moved to the other side of the box. It did. It moved somewhere else, right? So it moved yeah. to an area away from where it was before, correct? So yeah. we're going to develop a working definition of erosion. So flip your notebook over to your other page, 35. So erosion is a word in the middle. And we're going to fill out this page. Okay, so our definition of erosion is pretty much what Megan just said it was. Was it Megan talking? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so erosion is moves weathered rock someplace else. I didn't get the full last part. You didn't get the last part of the other page? No, ma'am. Okay, I'm gonna give you this and then I'm gonna move over to that in just a moment, okay? Wrong way. Okay. Wrong way. There we go. Okay, so erosion, the definition, this is page 35 moves weathered rock someplace else. I'm so itchy today with allergies. <laughs> so definition of erosion moves weathered rock someplace else. tell you where some of the weathered rock is. It's in this five gallon bucket at my feet. <laughs> it's gross. And my bag of soil has lots and lots of ants in it now. Lots of ants. That's bad. Yeah, especially since I'm allergic to them. Like hundreds of ants, maybe thousands, because I can hear them not good. Okay. Has everybody got this? Moves weathered rock someplace else? Yes, ma'am. Do you have it, Melanie? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma you got it, Kimber? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So I'm going to flip back over because somebody didn't get the bottom part of this. The cup, wrong way. The cup with one hole, wrong way cup with one hole which represented a flood moved materials the fastest. So Kimber, are you coming back to class tomorrow? No ma'am, on Monday. Okay. My homeroom is now the biggest in the school. I have 21 students. So I have 23 desks in here and my class is now arranged in groups of four, which is nice because yesterday I had 23 desks and my room was getting very cozy. Two of my desks were 12 inches apart. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, so characteristics of erosion. Materials carried away. We saw plenty of that this morning. Into the bucket at my feet right now. And it can happen fast or slow. With the fan, most of that was slow, wasn't it? It didn't happen really fast. But with the cup with one hole, that was fast because it represented a flood. And we've seen images, we've seen it ourselves because we're in the South and we have floods, but we've also seen images um, 
online and on the news of floods, the fact that they cause fast changes. Okay, everybody have this now in characteristics? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma okay. Yes, ma'am. So erosion examples, falling rock. We saw that in the picture of gravity, right? Um, wind moving sand. It's like sand dunes. I hear a little brother. River moving sediment downstream. That's the Red River, isn't it? That's why it's red. Can you move it over a little bit, please? Absolutely. Anybody ever built a sandcastle? I have. Me. So have you ever noticed how waves will come in and take out the sandcastle? Yeah. Is that erosion? Yeah. Okay. So waves knocking down. A sandcastle. Now, they want us to also come up with non-examples, so things would, that would not be erosion. Would lava destroying things, would that be erosion? Yes. Would it though? Would lava moving, does lava break down rock? Or does lava create rock? It creates rock. It creates rock, so it's not, moving broken down rocks someplace else. It's actually making rocks. So lava from volcanoes, that's not erosion. That's actually creating rock. Okay. Does everybody understand that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, fire burning things, that's creating a different kind of reaction. That's called um, chemical reaction. So that's not erosion. Okay. You'll learn about that in middle school. What about weathering? Is weathering the same thing as erosion? No. No, weathering is just breaking stuff up. Erosion is actually breaking it and moving it. Okay, so weathering is not erosion. It's different. It's breaking stuff up. Okay, I'll put a little shadow there because when I put my shadow on it, it comes in darker. Okay, so the non-examples are lava, fire burning things, and weathering. Okay, does that make sense? 
Yes, ma'am. And I think that's yes, it for today. That was a lot for today. So if you guys will take pictures and send me pictures of your work for today so I can put your uh, work in. I think today's work is going to be worth 15 points because there was a lot to it. There were no points for yesterday because yesterday was just kind of watching me set up the experiment for today and actually for several weeks of work. Um, but if you'll send me pictures of all your pages from today, there's quite a few pages. It's, um, let me go back and see, starts on page 27, is 27 through 35. Okay, so if you'll dojo message me or you can email me or you can text it to me, okay? That way I can get all your work in is like I said, 15 points worth. So that'll probably be two or three percent of your grade. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye, ladies. Bye. 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 Bye.